The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Ambar Garcia, Brian Broadus, Patrick Walker, and Derek Eagleton. It is Monday, November 4th, 2000. <laughs> 2023 <laughs> season 19 episode number 81 welcome to the latest edition of the break and as you can tell this is going to be a really really weird show my voice is gone uh, so we're going to try to battle through this one patrick is not with us today but i got you just canceled the show i'm not doing that we're not canceling the show especially coming off the weekend i just had <laughs> we're not canceling the show i got too much to say and i don't know if you'll understand any of it but that's I got the too problem much you said say. you said too much already <laughs> right right no i'm gonna battle through this thing and, yeah and hopefully we can um <clears throat> hopefully the folks out there can that's understand that's the what sound I'm the voice of a great time a victory oh, that's the sound an of victory. amazing night when an I, amazing day weekend like weekend <laughs> like you go back to thursday and this has been this has been an epic all time sports weekend between the Cowboys win in the way that they won it. We talked about that on Friday. On Saturday, friends and family started rolling in. We had I mean sorry, Friday they started rolling in. Saturday we've got the big game. We win in grand fashion. Uh, Sunday we wake up and realize that we've now gotten into the playoff. And then the cap, cap it yesterday afternoon. The uh, the Eagles get destroyed by the 49ers. Yeah. I mean, everything that I wanted to happen this weekend. And by the way, I put two fantasy wins in. So it's yeah. like everything I wanted to happen this weekend from a sports standpoint happened. And I earn this voice right now. I earn that this weekend. It's amazing well, what alcohol you. will do to your voice. <laughs> Alcohol, <laughs> screaming, talking loud, yeah, barking, yeah, yeah. a little bit of everything. Barking. Yeah, you know. That's part of his. Uh, that's what we do. That's, what his, that's inside of him. That's what we do. Is, you just go around. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. They Sometimes bark. They bark. Sometimes we do. They yes. bark. Yeah. Is yeah, that part do. of the, it's just the, what we do. the frat? Or? Yeah, it's a little bit of that. Oh, okay. yeah, it's a little bit of that. But we had a good time. We had a good time. Cool. All right. Where I want to start, though, today is Philadelphia versus yeah. uh, San Francisco. Um, I guess, give me your general thoughts on the game. I assume everybody watched it. What were your general thoughts on the game? Yeah, the the thing with uh, you got to just San Francisco when they are healthy, they're a hard team to deal with. Yep. And we've seen the 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 lull that they had, if you want to call it that, and they were on a, a bad little stretch there for about three weeks. Um, their quarterback really wasn't playing well because they were down, you know, their left tackle. They were down a running back. There was various things that they were dealing with. You know, played against some teams. I think at the time Cleveland's defense was pretty good. Uh, you know what they were dealing with that. So. That's that's really the nature of the National Football League right now. Mm -hmm. If you could find a way to have your best players being healthy, but have them playing at such a high level. And we all understand that. I mean, Philadelphia, we, we've we experienced here what Philadelphia experienced yesterday when you deal with a team that uh, that plays with the, the, the intensity that the 49ers do, their ability to play on defense. I don't think they're – well, their defense gets credit. Their offense gets a lot of credit. Mm -hmm. That's secondary – should get a lot more credit than we give them. And I know the next time around, you know, uh, if you get to see them, then you'll you'll probably appreciate it a little bit more. But, man, that that is a, a well-built team. When it's healthy, it's very good to outstanding. And they're very well coached. Mm -hmm. And so they make it makes it difficult. And, you know, not to give Philadelphia any excuses, but they're coming off a run, a pretty difficult run, if you look at the games that they've played up until this point. That that game against Buffalo, the overtime game, that took a lot out of them. And so, uh, you know, it, that's the part that's tough in the National Football League. You, you play your schedule and, and you hope that you can um, survive and move on. It's a very, very physical team. And you saw that on the field, how much – on both sides of the team, how much everybody cared. You, the emotions were really, really high in that game, and it felt like a playoff type of game vibe yeah. and everything. Uh, and also, that's karma. That's what happens when you run your mouth about the, <laughs> you know, and then it happens to you. Because, and I'm saying this in reference to all those Eagle fans that like to get on Twitter and say how bad the Cowboys got beat down by the 49ers, which was absolutely true. 
but then this happens to them as well. So it's just funny how um, just the dynamic between the fandom and the things that they say online as far as like how certain things only apply to the Cowboys and not to everybody else. And it, it was... It was an entertaining game. Uh, obviously, we're not fans of the 49ers, but definitely wanted them to win rather than, than the Eagles. And hopefully they come to AT&T Stadium a little sh- shook shook after that game because it, it was a tough game for them. So it's going to be interesting to see how or their energy level and how they show up when they get here for this weekend. That, that was a game, uh, if we all remember the... Uh, playoff game last year where Brock Purdy got hurt Mm -hmm. after the game there were a lot of comments from the 49ers that like hey if we'd had our guy playing you guys wouldn't have won this football game Mm -hmm. so there was a lot of talk from that 49ers side about all the things leading up to if we see you again this is what we're going to do they wrote a lot of checks in the offseason they cashed every one of them yesterday Mm -hmm. in that football game yeah, you got right now Philadelphia sitting at ten and two, and then Cowboys in Detroit both at nine and three with forty with the 49ers. And the 49ers have now put up forty two points on both the Cowboys yeah. and the Eagles. Um, is there a team or who is the team that presents the best challenge to San Francisco when you look at Dallas, um, Philadelphia, and Detroit? Hmm. Honestly, I think it comes down to how healthy are the 49ers at that moment? Because currently... Let's assume they're totally healthy. Let's I, assume all their guys are there. I still think... I would say Detroit. I would say Detroit. And I say Detroit because I feel like their offensive line is really good. They've got a veteran quarterback that doesn't turn it over very much. I know in the New Orleans game yesterday, there was, you know, it was kind of a, uh, you know, they, they got out to a little bit lead and things were kind of falling apart at the end. And, but they were, but that's how New Orleans plays. New Orleans has been that way all year. They get, they let you get a lead. Their quarterback gets knocked out and then they rally that kind of thing. I think Detroit is more built. And I think we'll see this when Detroit comes to town. I think Detroit's built more like the 49ers than than any other team. You're, you're going to see something very similar. The offensive line, the quarterback is, you know, the, the way the quarterback plays, the wide receivers, the defense, they don't let you run the ball. There's some questions about the secondary. you got a coach that's kind of a – they've got a – in Ben Johnson, they've got an offensive coordinator that's kind of a wide-open, creative kind of a guy. Aaron Glenn has done a heck of a job on, on the defensive side of the ball as the defensive coordinator. It's going to be a difficult game because I think they're kind of mirror teams. But I like the physicality with which the the, the, the Lions play with right now. The team I'm terrified of is the 49ers. I, I think mm-hmm. the Cowboys – I mean, I can't sit there and say – you know, we'll see how the those AFC games come up for the Cowboys. They've got Buffalo, which is a wounded team right now. Miami's speed terrifies me on the on offense and the way that they play. So you'll see a couple of how you'll match up against those kinds of teams. I don't know if you necessarily want to play uh, Baltimore right now, the way that they're kind of rolling along. But Detroit, I think, is the team that could give San Francisco the most problems right now, if I had to guess. Well, also, you've already seen – what it looks like against the Cowboys yeah. and the Eagles and how bad, like that wasn't even close. You know, the, it, it was a total beatdown. And what you haven't seen yet is against Detroit. So you would imagine, and the Cowboys, how many, three times now total where they've gotten beat by the 49ers, yeah. right? That's yeah, yeah it's times. You go back two, mo- two playoff games and yeah. then this, this, this game last this one. Yeah. You so, really had no answer this last one. This right. last game. I mean, it's getting yeah. worse. Defensively, yeah. Like. Yeah. defensively, Dan and them did a fine job the, in the playoff games of dealing with that yeah. with that offense. You some of the now your quarterback is playing at such a high level. Yeah. Your play callers on it. Uh, your offensive line has not allowed a sack, I think, since the Reagan administration was in presidency. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's kind of where you're at right now. Your team is, you know, they're the team that scares me. You're going the right direction. It's not like you're going to limp into this thing and you're going to play. You're playing bad football yeah. offensively. You know, now defensively, you know, there's some some question marks. But but I, but I, but I I'll, I'll say this I. You know, you got to give the Cowboys. I feel like they're a lot better offensively than they were the first time they met. 
I don't know if they're better defensively mm-hmm. the last time that the 49ers and the Cowboys met. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe if you add Shaq Leonard to that, it might be a little bit different story. Ironically, I think that's what it's ultimately going to come down to is Dallas's defense good enough to make a couple stops yeah. because if they play the playoff games like what they played last week when you're playing a playoff caliber team, right. although right now they're sitting outside the playoffs, Seattle is. The fact of the matter is like your defense really wasn't. They really weren't at their best. They really weren't playing at the level we we were accustomed to seeing. Right. Them, but they made the stops. They got when stops they at the them, absolutely, right? and yeah. that's more playoff football anyway. I think in yeah. the NFL, it, there's only a few times in history where you have that that shutdown defense that really is special. Most of the time, you got teams that are very offense heavy, and they have a defense that's that's opportunistic. Yeah, and and I think that's ultimately what you're going to be asking this defense if you go up against a 49ers team, mm-hmm. can you match them offensively? And then can your defense make the stop at, at, at whatever point in the game that's going to make the difference? Yeah, it's going to it's gonna be an interesting month. I'm super excited to see yeah. kind of how everything shakes up yeah. because these are very competitive team with a lot of talent. And now I think the key part of everything is just health, not just for the Cowboys, but for even the 49ers and yeah. the Eagles as well. Yeah, you know the interesting part about it, Brian, when you were talking about the, the, the Lions being the most like the 49ers, yeah. I actually look at it and I think – the Cowboys and the Eagles are built to play well against Detroit. I think Detroit is built to play well against San Francisco. Yeah, And that's where I'm like, it, it's not going to end up like that in the playoffs. Because if these are your top teams, the Cowboys and the Eagles, need, they can't be in the top four. Both can't be in the right. top four. So one of them is going to have to go up to San Francisco if San Francisco is the one. If San Francisco the two is the two, yeah. that actually sets it up where Detroit – would have an opportunity to take them on in the second round, presuming that all thing holds true and the fifth team beats the fourth team. Now you got the four there, and it would be the Cowboys Eagles matchup and 49ers uh, Detroit matchup, where those would be a very, very closely matched teams, in my opinion. Both those teams, I think, are, are, are matched to yeah. be able to play well against one another. And then it presents that interesting challenge there for an NFC Championship game. Yeah. I think when you look at, you know, with. Dallas, the way they're playing offensively right now has been it's just super impressive. I, I don't think anybody really wants to match up with Dallas. Uh, you know, when you look at the, the quarterback, you know, they're starting to run the ball. They get a hint of a running game. Mm-hmm. If they could find a way to somehow in the next month get that thing where it's where it's a buck twenty five, a buck thirty five a game. Now you're and, and that and that includes potentially Dak having to run the ball some himself. So, you know, they find a way of, of getting a running game where I was we were all talking about the four minute offense, you know, and and Dallas got into a four minute offense game last week mm-hmm. and it, it you know, then they had to you know, it, it they, they they you know they couldn't completely run it out. But but in the playoffs and down the stretch here, you're going to have to be good in that four minute offense to be able to. And I always like to talk about the middle eight. You know, they got beat in the middle eight, and the middle eight is the first four minute, the last excuse me, the last four minutes of the first half mm-hmm. and the first four minutes. And and Seattle scored 14 points in the middle eight on you. So you know you got to be able you know coming out of ha- coming uh, going into half you got to be you know, on it and then coming out of half you got to be on it and, and Dallas really wasn't on it last week like they need to be. Yep. Let's take our first break. When we come back, I want to have you guys rank the NFC. And one question I have for you guys: There are a lot of teams that are bunched up in that six and six range. Some of those teams getting hot here yeah, in the day. latter part of the season. I'm going to ask you guys: Which of those six and six teams do you think is most dangerous? We'll talk about that when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah's savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? 
their doctor. My friend supported me during a tough time. But what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you back to the break tis the season for youth football and dance camps presented by Evisalign. don't miss your chance to learn from the dallas cowboys cheerleaders and former nfl players at at&t stadium on december 22nd and 23rd celebrate the holidays with cowboys register today at dallascowboys.com slash camps <coughs> Welcome back. It is the second segment of the break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Uh, let's talk about the NFC. I want you guys to rank these teams. We got at the top Philadelphia, San Francisco, Detroit, Dallas, uh, and then a whole cluster of six and six teams: Minnesota, Green Bay, Atlanta, uh, the Rams, and Seattle. How would you rank those NFC teams right now? You know, I was just looking at something. I think the Packers are playing really, really well right yeah. now. And you know, if you look at their on a three, love. they're on a three game winning streak. I mm-hmm. think they've beaten the Chargers, the Lions in Detroit, and the then they also beat the Chiefs. And so That's and heavy. then yeah. and then the remaining schedule, I think they've got Giants, Tampa Bay, a Bears on there. Yeah. Uh yeah, this thing is gonna Panthers. Yeah, they've got some they've got some games that they should absolutely win. You know, Minnesota's right now, they were kind of Riding the uh, the Josh Dobbs train, and now it's like, you know, they lose a game, but you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, we got to look at our quarterback situation. Yeah. So they might be a team that's faltering uh, down the stretch. Uh, the the Rams are an interesting one because that is really about we talk about health, mm-hmm. and when when the Rams are healthy on offense. They're very capable of putting up a lot of points. Yep. And Matthew Stafford actually looks healthy playing football right now. So the Rams at 6-6, six and six, we'll see. Seattle's a team we all saw, so we know what Seattle is. Seattle's a team you could put points on. The problem is, dealing with those wide receivers, I don't want to see them again. You know, I really, really don't. I made that very clear on Friday. I didn't want to see them ever again. Mm-hmm. And uh, But... You know, that's their quarterback can also have problems. And I I would I would say that to me the team I feel like that has the best chance of going forward and being a team that could be a six or seven team in the playoffs and then go win a game against a you know, a two or three kind of a thing. I think it's Green Bay. Because yeah. I, I really do. I think that they're kind of figuring things out defensively. Their receivers are coming around. But their quarterback's playing at a really nice level right yeah. now, and they're and they're learning a lot about him. So I would give the Packers and and the Seahawks. I go Packers, Rams, Seahawks. Kind of my 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 three right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, with the Packers, you see them trending upwards. Yeah. And you see the teams that they have faced uh, in the last few weeks yeah. and that they beat. Yeah. So that's impressive. And, and you got to start keeping an eye on them. But you talk about teams like Seattle, the Rams, teams like – they just don't have the consistency. They mm-hmm. There are teams that they have talented players. Right. You see them be competitive – but it's just like one of those tops, you toss the coin and it's like, okay, which team is going to show up? Um, how are they going to perform today? Type of situation. You, nothing can, like, I wouldn't bet on any of those teams. Uh, so, not that we can't do any betting, but <laughs> we don't bet on uh, it. No, we do not yeah. against the law. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it's, it's impressive, honestly, to see the Packers kind of start turning things around yeah. and especially. 
it's still hard to see a Packers team without Aaron Rodgers yeah. and just see them be successful. So it's it's interesting <clears throat> and, and impressive some of the things that they've been able to accomplish here in the last few months. Uh, yeah. last month. I like what I'm seeing from Green Bay, but the fact is, if I'm looking at the playoffs. I still would put the Rams and the Seahawks ahead of them mm-hmm. as a dangerous team because of the veteran presence on those two sure. teams. I mean, you got I mean with the Rams, you got those guys, they got a they got a several of their their leaders that were there when they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. So they know how to play that playoff football, right? And I think, you know, the Packers right now, they're kind of surprising people, kind of jumping up. You get to the playoffs, it's a whole different ball game. Oh, it is. And so and so I, I still would if I'm having to to just, as you said, bet on it, I would say I'm more concerned about I would be more concerned about the Rams and the Seahawks because they're veteran. There's a veteran presence there yeah. that will understand the playoffs a little bit better uh, than than the Packers. But I agree with you. I think the Packers are playing as well as anybody right yeah, now. Yeah, the Rams. If you look at the remaining schedule, there's probably a couple of games they're going to lose. They're at the Ravens this weekend, and then they finish up with San Francisco at yeah. San Francisco. And then they traditionally play the 49ers pretty well. Yep. Uh, and so you know that that's something to kind of keep an eye on, as we like to say. Uh, but I. And look at Seattle's schedule the next few games. 49ers, Eagles, uh, and then the Titans, Steelers, and then Cardinals. But those next... These next two games for them, those yeah. are tough games. Yeah, the the thing about it is, like, yeah, it, it's it's just a matter of you know, can you find ways to win those games, or you know, that that's the thing. You're you're uh, along the way, you're going to win some games that you probably shouldn't, and you're going to lose a couple that you probably sh- shouldn't either. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's where we're at. Right? I, I never would have believed that that Arizona could have gone into Pittsburgh and won a game yesterday, yeah. but they did with all the weather delays and things that they had yesterday. You know, that that's that's a really, really, there's some bad losses, and Arizona is usually involved with your bad loss. You know, if you're one of those teams like Pittsburgh, Dallas kind of have a, a shared of the, you know, that was a bad loss deal right there. Yeah. Yeah. One of the tough things is that uh, the Atlanta Falcons yeah. or somebody from the NFC South is going to take a spot from one of these other teams because I don't think I don't think I don't think there's a team in the NFC South uh, that is as good as the top probably eight teams seven eight teams in the uh, NFC yeah uh, but but they're going to have to have a spot obviously because they're going to have a division winner who do you think right now is in line to be that division winner I think it's probably going to be Atlanta myself uh, I, but the the thing with the thing that makes Atlanta hard to deal with is they're really not very good on offense I don't think you know if you just believe in metrics and statistics and things like that you know they really really struggle in the passing game and you know but they 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 want to try and run the football that's their that's if you're if you're a team that are playing them you have to worry about their ground game yep because they will they, they they they're top three in attempts they're top six or seven in yards and so if you know you're going to get a heavy dose of them running the football at you they're going to try and make the game ugly and all that uh, to deal with but defensively they're kind of mid pack you know but i just think that they're better D- to me the saints are a some weeks they find it other weeks they, they the saints never can get a lead in a game and then be able to it always seems like they're playing from behind and they turn the ball over at an alarming rate. Yep. So I feel like that's why Atlanta will probably win. Yeah. Well, neither team, uh, the Falcons or the Bucks, offensively, they're not good at scoring. Like yeah. they cannot score many, many points, yeah. and and that's going to be a problem at some point. You got to figure out how to get it in the end zone and start uh, summing up some points, but. Right now, out of the two, I would say I would agree with the Falcons uh, and also with the schedule that they got coming up and they're going to face the Bucks here soon. I think that's a game that the Falcons would end up winning uh, against the Buccaneers. But it's one of them is going to make it, but they're, I think they'll, it won't be one of those scenarios where all of a sudden you get surprised and they end up making it to the top. They're going to be eliminated in the Well, it's I mean, to Derek's point too if it Let me not say that cuz you never freaking know in the <laughs> it, NFL, yeah, but Yeah, you're right. No, it's, it's the the thing I'm uh, Derek said about the young quarterback. If Atlanta makes it with 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 their with their young quarterback there, I mean, his first time and all that they, like I said, they're going to lean on. I mean, it is going to be. Can you stop the run? They are not going to throw a ball in a playoff game. Yep. Now, the problem to your point, Ambar, is 
Dallas can also put a lot of points up on a board, yep. and that that puts a lot awesome. of pressure on mm-hmm. you to have to make plays. Yep. And if you can't do that, then Dallas will run you out of the park. And that's really any one of those teams you want to mention in NFC South. I think the one that would – I mean, all of their offenses can tend to be very sporadic. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans, if they get on a roll, they can, make, they can score some sure. points. But they're so erratic, and yeah. they turn the ball over. Tampa Bay, same thing. Like, Tampa Bay is a team that's kind of erratic. If you get them on a roll, they got some weapons that can kill you. But yeah. it, but it, they're just so erratic, you don't know what you're going to get. There used to be a, a big, big home field advantage in New Orleans, right? And yeah. I don't yeah. think it's there anymore. Yeah. I think New Orleans used to have that, that ability uh, to kind of hurt you like Seattle used to hurt you with yeah. their crowd. And you know, and, and I think that if they have to go, if Dallas has to go to Atlanta, huge crowd base from the east coming that way. If they go to New Orleans, huge crowd base coming. You know, we'll we'll, we'll find a way to get down to New Orleans for that game. So they'll they'll make it difficult. They'll battle either Atlanta's fans or the Saints fans for you know, that stadium for sure. Before we go to break, uh, I I want to selfishly talk a little bit about college football. And uh, I wanted to get your opinion on on where do you think the the college football playoff committee got it right? Uh, I think that's kind of the the topic that's dominating football yeah. fans around the country. They put in Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama. Yeah, two teams in there, Texas and Alabama, who both have one loss. Florida State right. did not lose this season. Right? Uh, did they get it right? Well, they might not have got the first team right. If you want to be honest with you, mm-hmm. the, the Washington, I think, is I know Washington has had its moments. Michigan schedule does nothing for me right now. Yeah. They won the Ohio State game, which is a big win, huge win. It's one of the legendary wins. And, and Jim Harbaugh has done it three times in a row right. now, which is huge, which is huge for his because there was a time three, four years ago where Jim Harbaugh, they were talking yeah. about getting rid of him. And now the circles, the, they're still hearing circles about him leaving Michigan in that program and going to coach the Bears. Mm-hmm. So that just shows you kind of where Maybe everything's at Michigan right now. Um, I do. I do feel like though that uh, I do feel terrible for Florida State, and I feel terrible for the reason why I think they're punishing them for their quarterback not being in the, you know, not being in the in the in the part of the, the game now. And you know, it's it's unfortunate part of the game, the injuries, and they they talk, but they, that schedule that they've played. They've, you know, they've managed to. They play tremendous defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, Florida State. They, you, they turned the ball over. They turned the ball over in that game the other night against Louisville, basically on their own ten yard line, and they get an interception mm-hmm. to stop that. You know, and they, 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 all they've done is, all the games that they've played. You know, they've asked these kids to play, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, next man up, and they keep winning. And I think that you have to respect that at some point in time. Now, it, it, is, is it pretty that to not have a quarterback and go into the, one of these games? No, it's not. It's not. They, you know, we've, we've seen that bad quarterback play leads to blowout games, and nobody wants to blow out game. But Florida State, the way that they – everybody talks about offense and the, the teams left, you know, Michigan and, and, and Washington and Texas – Florida State's defense is capable of stopping any one of those offensive attacks. Yep. And Alabama, to me, and I'm not saying this because I'm an LSU guy, I have the utmost respect for Alabama, but they they're, they were a fourth and 31 away from not being in this right. thing at all. Just you know, and, and you, and you yeah. want to talk about and you want to talk about the eye test and all that stuff. Hey, they won. They won they, they won the game, they beat Auburn. But Florida State won under a lot of duress themselves. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it's it's completely unfair to keep a 13 win team out of this playoff. Yeah, you know, and I, I think whether it's the quarterback or not, their defense could play with anybody in the country and make it that type of a game. Yeah, that's that's kind of part of my issue with this too. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, like even at, as Texas being the third yeah. seed, I personally believe that's a travesty. I don't think Florida State should be ranked lower than Texas. In this case, they should have been the number three team uh, in this poll because everybody they face, they beat. Exactly. That's it. Everybody they face, they beat. And my belief is that when you start talking about well, the quarterback is out. Yeah. This is we how much how many times do we talk about football being a three phase sport? Like you got offense, you got defense, you got special teams. Really good teams, really good teams know how to, even if one phase lacks they know how to bring it up another notch. Right. And that's exactly what we've seen them do. That Louisville team has a good offense. They do. They shut them down. They completely that did. That defense is legit. And and my problem is 
they should have had the ability and the opportunity to be able to go yeah. out there and say, yeah, we don't have our starting quarterback, but our defense may still be good enough, yeah. like, as you said, to stop all those other offenses. Yeah. And if we can do that and manufacture some points, yeah. as they did in the Louisville game, yeah. we could win some games. They gave, up, they gave up a block punt and didn't give up. I mean, it's, it's amazing the things that happened to Florida State in that game, and their defense would not allow them to lose that game. Yeah. They, you know, and, and really, they tried, to, they tried to coach around the quarterback. They did, and they, you know, their second quarterback's in concussion protocol, and by the time the games are going to be played, he should be fine. Yeah. So they're, you know, they're, but you know, they're they're punishing Florida State for not having their quarterback, and that's unfair. And the other thing we're seeing here, and this is just the reality of where college football is going, it's not a Power Five; it's no. a Power Two. Yeah. It is the Big Ten and, and the, the SEC, SEC. Yeah. and they are never going to leave those conferences out of yeah. a playoff scenario like this. They're, they're just not going to do it. Yeah. This was the prime opportunity for them to do it. They're just not going to do it. Yeah. And especially now that you have these big brands from the Pac-12 and the Big 12 now moving into the SEC and the Big 10, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. It is a two-power conference well, in college football, and that's where that's where the champions are going to typically come from. Yeah, we've got 12, uh, 12 teams next year, yeah. and you know, we'll, hopefully that'll help them. But the 13th team will have a complaint. I think, my, right, my, yeah. I think LSU's the 13th team right now. And, and they, they have found a way to get LSU in this time. Well, we, we, we didn't deserve an opportunity, but how poorly. But you're going to have a Heisman Trophy winner from mm-hmm. LSU this year. The thing about it is, to me, and I just, you know, there's going to be a day, and Derek, you know this because of your background in media, is that there's going to be a day where we have 40 <laughs> college football teams yeah. playing, and they're going to play each other, and it's going to be just for TV. Yeah. It's going to be a TV-driven league where – Number number two, Texas plays number fourteen, LSU, mm-hmm. and it's going to be those teams playing, and they're going to control all the television. It's about inventory, and they're going to have the best inventory, and that's how they're going to sell these packages, yeah. you know. And maybe teams thirty nine and forty get relegated. If you're not good enough, then you get relegated, right. and we bring two more teams into the mix. But that's going to be college football. It's going to be college point. football, yeah. but in, yeah, we're going to have forty teams playing each other every single One week. League. And it's going to be billions of dollars involved. Yeah. I, I think that at the at the least, there's going to be two conferences. But yeah. I think it's going to all consolidate yeah. to where you're right. You're going to have the best teams in this super conference yeah. or these two super conferences, and that's where all the games are going to be and played. It's going to and fund, ultimately, the championship's going to come from there. It's going to fund all the other sports that are involved in those athletic programs too. Yeah. That they, you know, they always talk about, you know, hey, the women's sports and the slow, the lower sports, men's sports, and stuff. And that's what they're going to do. It's going to make so much money in this thing that the, all the the the, the all all these universities that are part of this are going to be rewarded for it, and their athletic programs will be rewarded to it through 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 money. All right, we're going to take our final break. I do we're not come watch. Back. Y'all know I don't I know, follow. I, didn't, I, didn't I don't even follow college football, football yeah. but just listening to this. <laughs> I'm already stressed out. Like I, I'm like, man, I could not handle another layer of football level experience. Uh, it's stressful. That, that sounds very, very it's stressful. stressful. It's stressful when your team's involved. Yeah, it no really, doubt. really is. And I feel no. terrible for guys like a John Mashota, who is a huge fan. He he spends yeah. his money and travels and goes and sees games mm-hmm. at Florida State. We all love John and what he does, but you know, I mean, he, you know, you take that hard. Yeah. You do. I mean, uh, hey, a trip to the Orange Bowl is nice, but it's not the same as being in New Orleans or or in Pasadena for, for a matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. And I and that's fandom. And I, I was I was having this conversation with Steve uh, Dennis on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter. Yeah. And and the fact Ohio is he State was trying guy. to make yeah he was trying to make the difference between an alum and a fan. And I'm like, no, man, fandom is hard. It is hard. Like, if you're a real fan, you don't just pick up and leave because your team's losing. Yeah. You go through it. And when yeah. you go through it, you go through it for however long oh, it yeah. takes so you can get back to that moment of glory because those moments of winning are worth all of the bad stuff you deal with oh, over yeah. the years. So yeah. it, that fandom fandom is hard, man. It it's is very hard. Much. And I don't I don't ever I deal with enough stress with the Cowboys. <laughs> right. It, oh it's God. hard, especially when you got NFL and you got college teams. Saturday and, and Sunday. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's a lot. Gosh. It's a lot. But <laughs> in moments like this, as you can tell from my yeah. voice, yeah. man, it's so great when oh, your yeah. team actually wins. It's so great. All right, we're gonna take our final break. We'll come back. Amber has some questions that she's gotten from you guys. We'll get to those in just a moment. It's DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 
5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil change, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break. Experience the most electrifying event of the holiday season, the Cowboys Christmas Extravaganza, powered by Reliant. Every Friday and Saturday night through December 16th, the Cowboys Christmas Extravaganza ignites the star in Frisco with an unforgettable holiday performance showcasing, showcasing 65 performers, including the world-renowned Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, Santa Claus, and appearance from your favorite Dallas Cowboy football heroes. Visit thestardistrict.com for more info. Welcome back to the final segment of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. The segment brought to you by blockchain.com. And now I'm going to do what I should have done at the beginning of the show. I'm going to hand it over to Amber. Let's go. <laughs> All right. One of the questions I've been seeing a lot uh any updates on Shaq? And I know people are waiting on this. I asked this morning, and uh, they're still waiting. So there were there was thought that maybe, in talking to some folks in the front office, they thought maybe they would get an answer on Sunday, mm -hmm. and then they got pushed to Monday. And as of, say, 10.30 this morning, they were still waiting. Yeah, and as we thought... Shaq Leonard is driving this decision. Ultimately, yeah. he'll yeah. decide what team he wants. This is a recruiting type situation. Yeah. He'll decide which of those teams he wants to be on, and, and that'll be how it works and I'm out. I'm assuming it should happen very I think today, soon. I think today very you'll get, yeah, today you'll get an answer. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Today you'll yeah. get an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what helps the Cowboys down the stretch with these tough games coming up? Red zone efficiency woos disappear or defensive penalties go down significantly? That's a really great question. Who answered that? Do you have an who asked that question? Um, here we go. <laughs> oh, is that all it said? Like, okay. well, it's <laughs> at Ar Argo Alex 52. Okay, it's, it's, yeah. I'm sorry. Great. In Twitter, nobody has their real name except us, right? We, yeah. we, we put our names out there on the right. line every day. And uh, pictures. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the thing about it is I, I, I do think the penalties are a problem. I, I really do. And, and mm -hmm. I know Dallas, to me, there's times where they can overcome things that happen to them in the red zone. As long as they don't turn the ball over, and they could get penalties down there and they kind of figure it all out. The defensive penalties, the way with the lining up of offsides and and you know the false, well, the you know jumping offsides, the defensive holdings, things like that. You know those penalties. I mean, we haven't seen any you know Sam Williams roughing the passer penalties or hands to the face here lately. But yeah, I think that some of these defensive penalties, the DPI penalties were big the other day. Defensive pass interference penalties were big. So if you're going to be any good. In these games, you can't give these offenses second chances and third chances, and I think the Cowboys did that in that Seattle game, you know. And so I'd like to see that go away. Yeah, I I, I was trying to pull it up, I couldn't get it up quickly enough to see, but um, the the red zone efficiency seems to be a problem in and especially in the games that they've lost this year, yeah. and then it creeped back up here against Seattle. They were only fifty percent in yeah. the red zone, only fifty percent, and this is the bigger one, only fifty percent in goal to go situations. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, because when you get into the playoffs, you're going to need those points, score. especially mm -hmm. when you're dealing with the likes of Philadelphia, with the likes of San Francisco, with the likes of Detroit. You're going to have to score. And uh, and so I, although I think the penalties are a problem, I think the red zone is an even bigger problem just because – and it, and, and 
It's like the red zone isn't the problem itself. It's emblematic of other things. It's emblematic of the fact that you can't consistently run the ball. That's yeah. really what oh, the yeah. problem yeah. is. And so you get down the red zone, you have compact field, and you can't effectively run the ball. You get in goal to goal situations. How many times have we seen, you know, you know, first and goal at the eight and you only pick up one yard on first down? Like it's if you can't run the ball in those situations when there's a compact field, you make it even harder to be able to throw because you don't have a lot of room to throw, right? Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, they got to figure out this running game because yeah. if they solve the running game, that will solve, in my opinion, a lot of the red zone and goal to goal situations. I think they're not showing you Dak Prescott pulling the ball down on the goal line. I think they're not. I think they're going to. I think we're going to see if it, when it gets in the playoffs, there's going to be a lot more of Dak pulling that ball and trying to hammer it, hammer yeah. it home. You know, well, like they're on the eight first down that mm-hmm. pull the ball. Everybody's collapsing because they don't think Dak is going to run. But I, I think, I think and those have mostly been successful. They have when been. Done it. They yeah. have been absolutely. And I, I think that's something that you know that that to me that would be a quick fix. Mm. More Dak pulling the ball and and trying to get, you know, the four or five yards, or maybe even break that thing into the end zone. Yeah. What's your confidence level in Terrence Steele putting together a good game against the Eagles this week? Man, he had another rough one last week, so I don't know. I mean, you, the tough part is that he's going to be facing a guy in Reddick that I think is among the very best yeah. rushers in the league. Uh, and so even, even giving up two, three pressures mm-hmm. in this game is going to be somewhat of a win because that guy, is yeah. a, he's a beast. Yeah. Um, so I, I I think you put it on you grade it on a curve. I think he will have I think he'll have a better day than he had last week. Yeah. Uh I don't know if it'll be without flaws though. Mm-hmm. The problem they run into is they have such good inside players that Zach Martin can't help him all the time. You know, they've got those big defensive tackles and they've got guys they'll put inside and rush the passer and mm-hmm. and you know, and so all of a sudden Philadelphia turns you into a one on one blocking team. You know how much can the out? How much can Pollard help? You know how much can Rico Dowdle help? How much can putting um, Sean McEwen over there, or putting Ferguson over there, or putting Schoonmaker over there? You know you got to find ways to widen him away from the ball, make him have to deal with a, a, a full man, two gaps away from being. If you put him right on the shoulder of Steele, that's a that's a quicker path to the quarterback move him out a whole player another whole two <clears throat> gaps that's maybe the ball gets out with Dak before he gets around the corner mm-hmm. but you got to be careful of helping him because if you get backs they bump into linemen sometimes and it throws them off yeah it throws their block you know their sets and all of a sudden they have they get hit from the side and they're like now they're thrown off and now you've got two guys and the one guy gets around them because both blockers are uh, problems. You have to be really careful about trying to help him and how much in this game. Yeah, I think the thing that also will save him and, and all then the entire offensive line is the fact that Dak is just playing on a whole nother level yes. right now. So even when pressure gets there, escape. Dak is escaping. He's yeah. finding the open guy downfield. He's getting the ball out. So, I, you know, it, it, this last game, unless you went and looked at some of the specific stats around pressures, it didn't really look like Steele had a horrible day. You go look at his number around pressures. You're like, oh, that's kind of a high number. Yeah. I think I've, what I saw was like Tyron four. Smith had a high high pressure number right. too. So, first so time it, in a long time. It happens, and but the the beautiful part about it is you don't notice it as much right now, just because Dak is playing yeah. at yeah. such a high level, man. Yeah. It's it's just unconscionable unconscionable to think about how good he's playing relative to what this looked like yeah. at other times mm-hmm. in his career. And that's not to say he was bad in those times. It's just saying he's been a good quarterback. Right now, he's playing on a different level than that. Well, it, also is, just it is such a, a higher level of football. Being in sync with the receivers, like now he doesn't have to stay there in the pocket holding the ball and thinking, oh, where am I going to throw it to? Is I think it's the combination, too, with some of the play calling and, yeah. and the receivers just doing what they're supposed to do, being on time in the route that they're doing, and Dak being able to kind of get rid of the ball very quickly. One of the big problems they had in the last meeting with Philadelphia was the pressures. Mm-hmm. And I think that coaches realize that it, playing at home will help. Yeah. But I think Mike now will tailor a game plan to help him that way. I think this is a very, very different team than when they faced the yeah, Eagles absolutely. last time. Absolutely. So I'm so pumped for this weekend. Clearly at home, they're a different team. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Um, last question real quick. Can the Cowboys apply next Sunday some of the concepts that San Francisco used to dismantle mm-hmm. the Eagles, mostly on defense? Mm. I'm looking forward to sitting down and really studying that game, which yeah. I'll do tonight. But uh, you can always steal things. 
You could, matter of fact, I know we talked about how to stop San Francisco with how what Cleveland did with we saw about playing too deep and then running the running the running the safeties in the middle of the field as a robber. The, you know, so you're playing, you're really playing at three levels. So, yeah, I, you know, there's there's always things, there's always ideas that you could steal from previous mm-hmm. games and say, okay, we can do it this way. It might not be exactly what San Francisco does, but the the thought of it of how to get to it will come to Dan Quinn and then watching this tape. Yeah, to me, I, Buffalo I, too. I mean, there'll be some things that even you know you could go back two, three games. Yeah, that maybe that you know that what what, what really gave Philly problem and there's stuff that you gave them problem with when you played them last time. Mm-hmm. But you don't you know it's all about how you attack their in my opinion how you attack their offensive line. That's how I, I that's how I think you get after Philly. Yeah, I think there are probably some things and that that you could look at, but quite frankly for me this game is more of a measuring stick on how much has this Dak led offense evolved since yeah. they played Philadelphia. I want to see if if they can finish the drives that they didn't finish in Philadelphia. Right. I want to see if they can, you know, in situations where the rush got to them and, and really killed their drive, can they take advantage of those situations? Yeah. Now, like they've been doing against some of these other teams, can they have the same type of offensive Red production? Red Zone, too, was down yeah. in Red Zone problems. Can they, yeah. can they have the type of offensive production in this game uh, that they've been having the last several weeks? If they can do that, which, by the way, that was a good game they played in Philadelphia. They just had some slight things that they weren't clicking on. And if they get those things solved, I don't know they have to do something different. I just think they got to be better than they were in Mm -hmm. Philadelphia. And they've been better the last few weeks. Now we'll see if it translates against Philadelphia. Yeah. Agree. And uh, oh my God, I can't, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this weekend and how it's going to look. Because again, the Cowboys are so much better than the last time they faced them. They have every, like, they have more things going to their advantage right now than. Philly does at the moment and when and when they face them like you said it was such a close game like it didn't come down to where it wasn't San Francisco and how that looked like where they got completely dominated this was such a close game and it came down to the wire so it's going to be an an exciting one for sure all right we appreciate you guys joining us we'll be back tomorrow uh we will get to some more fan questions tomorrow Amber will have a game for us Hmm. uh we'll do a little fun stuff tomorrow because we uh we have another day before we got to jump right into uh Cowboys versus Eagles uh so until then for Brian brought us Amber Garcia I'm Derek Eagleton this has been the break live on DallasCowboys.com radio this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club how about this